Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's amazing asteroid based space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we have 14 duplicates crammed inside this a tiny, tiny little ball of rock that I presume to be drifting through the voids of space. We've never really talked about where these guys are actually located, but you might remember last time we had ourselves a little bit of a pressure issue. We wanted to start the plastic age, and that meant going going and re retrieving some crude oil to refine it into petroleum, which we could then turn into plastic. Should have been nice and easy. Unfortunately, I did not take note of any of the pressure levels of the oil that we were cracking into, and it all overflowed, destroyed a whole bunch of stuff. Good times were had, and today we're going to try and fix that. Another thing we're going to do is try and turn all of the cold water tank into obsidian bearing rocks. Uh, all the ladders, all the walls, everything around, just to make sure the temperature gets dissipated as quickly as possible. I have a plan for the overfilled oil production room. My, my major plan is just to abandon all the machinery that's in there. It's already far too gone. It's um, overflowed up to like double the height of the oil processing rig. So we're going to just abandon that as lost. It's too hot. It's about 80 odd degrees for my duplicates to go inside. We should have had the exosuits up and running by now, which would have mitigated that a little bit. And maybe we could have dealt with it. But still, I probably would have ended up abandoning. And what we're going to do instead is build a new oil processing uh, rig across Across the way we're going to start with the actual oil refinery there and then just in a small side room off of it we need to deal with the various things that it outgasses are things like natural gas that also the petroleum itself uh, things are like this we'll be taking power from the heavy wire that runs up and down or with the ladder and obviously we've still got most of the piping in place for the natural gas and all these things so I'm just gonna end up dumping them all into the system that still stands up there uh, we can see that we're gonna need a pump at the bottom that's going to need a filter that will then split off the natural gas as always dumping all the other gases just in the corridor because who cares about the corridor and I think that's quite a good way of setting up with the uh, natural gas pump down below because of course natural gas is quite a heavy gas uh, checking the temperature of the water is doing pretty well actually it's a good enough temperature about 22 degrees that I feel it's time to start pumping it back into my main water uh, holding area because of course we are starting to get to the point where we can't actually pump water out anymore by hand you know with the uh, the, the straw pumping thing that we have for the duplicates. Uh, obviously, the automatic pumping system is the last thing that's actually going to be dumped in the water uh, before we run out, if you will. As the water drains, there's always going to be a pump in it to do with the... Uh, toilets and the sinks and uh, such things are like uh, that. So we've got Brum coming through and digging out the oil refinery room there and I've noticed that things are being tried to be built out of copper and we don't want that. Let's try and make it out of gold so that when it's made out of the local materials we can go about just building it out of the stuff that, there, that is there so we don't have to run around. And the other thing I decide is that maybe, just maybe, we could do with a bit of a power expansion here or at least a power storage expansion. We have of course got the three natural gas generators Generators or natural gas geysers all hooked up to generators, which are providing sort of around the round the clock, 24 hours, all the cycles uh, power. And it's um, it, it's becoming a bit of a, a worry to me that we might actually end up with some sort of situation where the dormant times line up again and we end up having a very low point of power when we've become quite used to having all this power. So I'm setting up battery rigs just to be uh, just to be more mindful of that. The next thing that needs to go down is, of course, the petroleum to oil generator, or the plas plastic press, as we call it. And you'll notice that I'm uh, encapsulating all the rooms on this side uh, with tiles. This is because slime lung is, of course, a big problem. If you press F9 at any point and look at any swamp biome, it is just awash with little green dots of slime lung. Uh, you can see, with the water being pumped out of the cold tank here into the main water storage, uh, we are finally filling up above the area where the manual pump is working again. So that is A-OK -okay and pretty pretty good for me. I'm feeling strong about our water situation again. I was uh, starting to get a little bit worried that maybe we'd get to the situation where we'd actually run out of mill lice. Uh, that would be very interesting. Uh, or lice loaf, sorry, because of course uh, another three, our chef, needs to take 
two lice loaf, uh, two meal lice, sorry, and combine it with water to make a lice loaf. Uh, and I'm trying to get people only eating lice loaf because you get more calories out of it than what you put in. Uh, so it's kind of, it balances well on the long term. All right, so we're nearly getting to the point now where I think I've got everything laid out to be able to start thinking about ripping out the floor underneath. Uh, we need to obviously get everything put in, but we have a pump on the left, which then feeds into an oil refinery, which then feeds into a plastic press. There are a few other things that need to be dealt with. There's certain outputs coming from different places that need to be uh, dealt with. I believe the plastic press has a carbon dioxide output or something like that that we need to deal with. But again, these are all things that we can deal with with the uh, local environment. For some reason, despite the fact that all that is very important down below, all my duplicates decide that they want to work on the batteries up here. I'm kind of all right with that. I don't have a big problem, but the big problem that I do have is the state of the uh, polluted oxygen in the, ga the gas generator room. So I have uh, put down a deoxygenizer there just to try and make it nicer. Deodorizer, sorry. I always get those two words mixed up. Having a quick scan around. Things like look like they're doing okay, but I really want to try and segregate our algae smeltery um, from distillery, sorry, from the rest of my base. So I make sure that the jobs are down for the duplicates to go around and put those walls in place. And looking at these batteries, we seem to be at some sort of weird place where people are like halfway doing some jobs and halfway going through some others. And I think it's got something to do with food. So I go off and turn all the lice loaf down. Obviously with the uh, water issues that we had, I did turn the lice loaf back on. Uh, but obviously that's all dealt with now and we've got no problem. I am discovering problems with my water water system though uh, as it was a holdover from last time you can see that the water vent at the top of the hot water tanks uh, is still outputting uh, that's a little bit worried because we are super super over pressurizing super worrying sorry we are over pressurizing the area quite strongly uh, i also feel like we need to take these batteries out so that we can provide a transformer for the power system just down below from us right there uh, most things have been powered now that airlock turns out it has not and it'll be nice just to have some power around here maybe we want to light up the barracks that the duplicates are living in there maybe some sort of lighting for the med bay it might go uh, go down pr pretty well but there's just it's always nice to have a little bit of power kicking around uh, looking at the amount of hydrogen we've got up here as well it is uh, starting to uh, seem a little bit ridiculous and I really would actually like to set up some sort of system but I'm gonna be saying this four episodes to come yet because you know it's it's something that's not really massive pressing for the future health of the colony not like trying to get the water sorted or trying to get like plastics on the go or something like that so it's one of these jobs that just kind of filters off into the background somewhere and you're like oh I should really get around to doing that someday and, and then they never do just like you know sorting your chests out in Minecraft or something like that but anyway we got through that little talk and the batteries are done so now we're gonna have a look down here and we're gonna turn everything up to top priority to make sure we can get this all done uh, a lot of people ask me why I go up to such high priorities uh, and the major reply that I have to them is if you note, take note aside from things like oxygen production and food uh, I tend to only make jobs that are going to disappear with their completion into high priorities so like the building once the once the build has been built uh, the nine just disappears it's no longer a high priority job it turns back into if it's uh, something that needs being to be looked at turns back into a five if not it doesn't really have a priority until it breaks or needs repairing or something like that uh, so yeah I don't really, I think, is the answer. So the next day breaks down and I see that we've got a little bit of an algae problem. So my first thought is to start digging through the swamp biomes. I also note that this water needs a little bit of a, a, a walling in, so we go and do that. I haven't looked around in this big old swamp biome. We've got to the uh, the right over here. I'm just like, yeah, let's take out all of this stuff. This is all slime and algae that we're taking out, so it should work out for us in the end. We might end up with a little bit of polluted water to deal with, but talking of polluted water, there is some falling down in a to our oil refinery down here. Not the biggest problem in the world. Uh, I'm also going to swap one of the airflow tiles for a mesh tile so all that drains out. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have any problems with liquids going forwards from this point in there, but I'm going to make it so any liquids that do come in can fall down into that little pocket down below. There is going to be a little bit of a problem when that fills up and we end up with like an air trap and stuff like that, but I'm sure at some point our duplicates will come along and open that up to uh, aid in the flow I, I hope anyway so everything seems to be going down all right but I'm being told that the um, 
the press is missing some outputs and you can see it's missing a gas output and I would like to put some sort of canister down maybe or something like that for dealing with the output the gas output of this so I put canister filler down in some sort of um, a plan to experiment with it uh, I very quickly I'm like actually you know what I, why experiment with new systems when you can put old systems down and, and take advantage of those but yeah I, I, I put that down anyway just to see if it makes uh, any difference but more importantly it ends up making the plastic press work and that, that was kind of the, my main goal there slapping a few doors around just to make everything feel uh, nicer I'm like okay the cold cold water tank is empty it is time to start emptying this hot water tank also big problems there uh, th th this is the problem that I'm talking about we've built up a bit of an airlock uh, where the gases cannot flow uh, and they've got trapped around the hot the, the water outlet up there uh, so we're just building up more and more and more pressure until eventually it's trying to uh, burst through the walls of the tank uh, as you can imagine this is not a desirable situation uh, it's, it's full of germy water uh, talking of fully full of germy water turns out that the pipes that led from the purifier to the hot water tank here had some food poisoning in them which means my nice clean water is no longer nice and clean now we, we've got a bit of a sort of a saving buffer if you will around the water pump for some reason this uh food poisoning doesn't actually want to spread all that far uh, but I panicked and I cut the wires uh, and uh, some some of the food poisoning got in uh, thankfully none of it went through into the cold water tank so we're all good there but it does mean that we're now at the situation where we have to stop and wait uh, so to, to let the let the the food poisoning die which is which is not great because at the moment we've still got a little bit of a water issue fair enough we have just emptied an entire like cold water tank into the main tank but that's really leading us into some problems and especially with the other hot water tank being fit to burst maybe we're about to run into some real big serious problems all right so with the completion of the oil doohickeys on the right, I have opened up the floor to this pump and hopefully now this will just all run automatically. Even if the oil and maybe if when the oil floods up and fills up that chamber, the pump should be all right. Fingers crossed if everything works out okay, it should be all right. We built it out of gold so that it's got extra heat resistance. And even so, I don't think the oil is quite that hot. Uh, we've got water being excreted from the plastic press, but we're all right with that. We can definitely live with that. During the night, I set up the research to get all the artworks and various sort of niceness that we can put around all the furniture places all the uh, artworks and stuff like that I set the research up for that and I also feel that we could do with a new power corridor down the bottom here so I, I put down a few tiles we open up a big old dig site and we go back and have a look at the germs here the germs are definitely moving in the right direction they are dropping down we are losing there's only a, a thousand or so maybe 1500 in some of the most uh, uh, infected areas but we have a bit of a new problem now where some of the uh, gas has escaped from the top hot water tank the liquid has gone over the, wa the water vent and it stopped pushing water into the tank sounds great because we're now not over pressurizing but we don't have anywhere for our waste water to go now that was the last place that we actually had and it turns out we should have like had a bit of a panic moment much much before this but the fact that it was just carrying on to over pressurize kind of lulled me into a full sense of security that we actually had a bit more time than we actually uh, did i was a little bit worried about one of the holes in the bottom of the water tank so i went around and uh, put down a whole bunch of jobs to make that more accessible put some ladders down and stuff like that and also went around and lowered the priority of just about every job on the map because i have managed to get a few things up to level nine and that's that's all right i, I was just saying about how it's okay because they're jobs that will disappear in the end but if they are all level nine then the ones that are like super super important are not going to get dealt with such as the wires for those heaters and you also notice that i've got a little job put in for the insulative tiles to be turned to obsidian tiles of course we want the temperature to flow through but of course there's a lot of water there so it could cause a bit of a problem i say it could cause a bit of a problem it will cause more than a little bit of a problem it's going to spill a lot of water but i think for the gains that are to be made the small inconvenience of dropping a tile's worth of 
water on the floor for it, I think is an acceptable uh, swap there. Having a look around in all the swamp areas, seeing if there's anywhere else we want to expand and trying to make sure that the water stays walled up so it doesn't spill out uh, in horrific manners. Over this side, I'm trying to get the temperature up as high as, uh, fast as possible so we can clean that water out, put it then into the cold tank and get that out as uh, fast as possible. Because of course, all the water... Well, mainly, mainly I actually want to get the wastewater flowing again. Just, you know, so people can start like flushing toilets and taking care of hygiene stuff like that all right we are about to start changing the bottom tiles on this hot water tank so uh, be prepared there we go we've had a flood and i've realized that i've made a little bit of a problem making them airflow tiles not mesh tiles because the water that is trapped in between those two sets of tiles is too deep to actually mop so i need to go through and change that out but until but sorry before we do that we're gonna drop a bunch more water on top no real serious issues it just means there's a lot of hot water dropping around but uh it's fine we can live with it uh we've got the cleanup crew on the go and thankfully despite the fact that they're complaining about the temperatures it's uh, it's an easy fix in big inverted commas it's a fix that duplicates can make happen uh, within a day maybe if we can get those tiles put down I was really expecting those guys to put the mesh tiles down a lot quicker than that you can also see coming from the plastic press or at least you could have uh, that I've put down a whole bunch of new uh, new gas vents pipes uh, that's to get rid of the canister there's no need to have the canister the carbon dioxide can be dealt with with the carbon scrubber that is up and part of the natural gas generator up top uh, so not really too worried about that so with the replacement of the mesh tiles we've got it to the situation where we can turn that uh, heating element on and off in our little oven there so that's working out pretty well and the fact that all of the tiles have been replaced means that we're going to be working towards a uh, very quick warming situation as far as possible it's still probably not going to be as fast as i would like obviously i want to really start getting that um polluted water flowing because as you can see all our duplicates are starting to have a little bit of a trouble out and about now i'm also keeping an eye on the germ level there and you can see that a lot of them are starting to get to the point where they are actually hot enough and they are dying on water because they just die on water as long as it's not polluted water um <clears throat> i also then want to get the temperature up and that'll be three things killing them and the fact that they're all well below a thousand germs uh is probably going to save us we have a bit of a leak up top though Oh man, one of the tiles finally gave out before anyone could actually do anything about it. Um, I suppose maybe the digging has something to do with it, so we're going to go around and replace some of those. I'm not actually sure what to do about this now. We've just got one great big uh, tank on the side that's just full of polluted water. It might actually end up being converted into tank space. Uh, that would be uh, a great idea there. We'd have, end up having to like dig it all out, move the water vent, uh, get some more heating going on question mark maybe i don't know we, we'll uh, have to check that out the, how to how to deal with a tank of such size might actually be a bit of a problem but uh slime long doesn't actually respond that well uh, to the, the the heating process anyway hit the heating process is really more just for taking out the food poisoning if you want to get rid of slime long it's really all about chilling it down to about nine degrees i think just below 10 degrees is when the slime lung starts to die but of course you then have the uh, the small narrow band of 10 degrees to zero degrees and you don't want things to freeze up on you when you're trying to sort your water out so at this point i'm looking at it wondering whether we can start pumping water anyway because we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we have to worry about uh and mostly i'm worried about the wastewater i've I don't want to keep like bashing on about this, but as you saw from that overlay there, we are in big trouble right now. Uh, thankfully, the spillage has given us a little bit of room to deal with just a trickle of wastewater so that we can like stop people peeing everywhere. There's just enough turning over to keep the duplicates uh, in toilets, if you will. So that works out pretty well. So I'm going to spend a lot of my time just kind of staring at this. I'm slowly coming to the conclusion that it takes time for the temperature to drop out of the water anyway even when we pump it over to the cold biome so slowly but surely i'm coming to the conclusion that i'm just gonna turn 
this pump on. As you can see, it's got, getting down to a, less than 400 grand, uh, 400 germs per tile, and that is actually one of the magic numbers. When it drops below, I think it's like 420 or something like that. It's actually a, one of those complicated um, ratios where it's all about how much mass in, is in the tile. But one thing I've noticed is full water tile, if it drops to about 400 or so, you start getting the um, underpopulation uh, effect that kills them very very quickly i'm not sure exactly what the number is but it's like 30 33 percent when it drops down to low population and in fact i think it actually just tipped over for a couple of them there which i was kind of hoping would make the germs spread out more therefore like reducing the number of germs in any one area and hastening their demise but unfortunately they just didn't and i'm wondering whether i can do anything to agitate the water to make that happen maybe like setting some sort of current up can we set up some sort of current can we have a pump at one end and an outlet at the other and then we just pump more and more liquids through to set up um movement systems i don't know if like we could do anything with that uh, it would mainly be for germ treatment like passing small amounts of germy water over heating plates yeah, yeah, that might be a way of dealing with things at some point, rather than like the great big tank on top of heating plates. But that's uh, other plans for other situations, I suppose. The dig upwards for the algae has actually turned into a bit of an exploration, so we're going to carry on digging that tunnel upwards. I'd like to try and reach the space layer, or at least the regolith layer, at some point. That's not going to happen uh, this episode, because we've got things such as polluted water pockets and such forth that we want to deal with. Then my main way of dealing with those is actually to go sideways down below, up and around, and then dig them off to another pocket somewhere. I think that kind of works out quite well. If we ever get an opportunity to have a look, uh, I will show you all what I mean. I mean, we did actually see... Uh, there hopefully i'm going to show you right now yeah indeed so you can see that i dig straight up and then there's a pocket to the right there that i want to like throw all the water into so that should work out pretty well for us so you can see around the pump all of the germs have died and i'm wondering whether it's time to start pumping a some of the water out just try and reduce the volume and hopefully get the germs dying a little bit quicker maybe pull those germs from the middle over the top of the hot plate that we have uh, on the right hand side that would be uh, very useful but whilst i was thinking about that i thought we'd come along and try and finish off this little tunnel that we've been doing here. We've got a few floaty things that have been exposed since we started uh, digging upwards, but that's all right. We can uh, take those out. Also expanding upwards to find not just some more uh, copper, but also start and adding a little bit of extra space up top because we're probably going to need to expand our farming situation at some point. The ranching is still going well, but it's kind of more of a bit of a background activity just to make sure we've got some hatch and some shine bugs kicking about because they are nice ones to have around and almost everything else we can just find on the map anyway i find it an interesting coincidence that on the right hand side you can see that the water levels of these two water pockets are somewhat equivalent there um, uh, it is literally just an, an interesting coincidence uh, so i now start to prepare the cold water tank for hot water to be coming in obviously we're going to be dropping quite a lot of hot water and it's going to mix with whatever the cold water is there and there is a small possibility that that water that mixed water would be within the right bounds to pump it out so i I changed the temperature just to make sure that is never going to happen. Uh, and uh, somehow, and I'm not sure entirely how, despite the fact that we are pumping water sideways, the germs just never move from that point there. Uh, even when we start reducing the, the uh, water level and you would have thought some of them moved across, no, that doesn't happen. They end up just dying, uh, which, you know, it's a bit of a win-win all around. I really thought we were going to have a situation where we start pumping uh, some dirty water into a clean tank and that would have been uh, absolutely horrific. I wouldn't have been uh, down for that at all. But even though I keep going back and checking and making sure, and things do get close, don't get me wrong, things get close. But remember, the uh, pump is pumping from the bottom tile of its plate, of its uh, little hitbox, if you will. Uh, and all the germs are up and around, and it's nice and hot water down there. So it seems to be working out pretty well for us. So my plan for this water, this wall, is just to kind of keep digging up one block at a time and let them build it up through the diagonal so we never get any sort of uh, liquid spill. So that, that that's working out pretty well for us as well. For those of you following the Exosuit Saga, we've actually got to the point where we can keep quite a few of the um, the lockers filled, if you will. Also, the oil doesn't seem to be overspilling the pump entirely, so I think we are keeping on top of it there. The germs are still holding back. I like this. Everything seems to be working a-okay there, and all the water that's being pumped, in out, pumped out is working fine. 
Uh, thankfully, all the polluted water is still filtering through the sieve at just a very minuscule rate, but that is enough to keep everything running that we need to run. And uh, I put up a new piece of artwork next to the research students because, you know, they're the guys that did the work there. Desperately not trying to ki kill this patch shoe. I'd really like to get like some sort of aquarium set up right there. Seems to be a good place to keep them as it was like close to my base, but not so close that it's uh, encroaching onto a uh, valuable re real estate space. So that's working out pretty well there. And still the germs, they keep them away from my pump. I like this. As long as you just keep back and keep scared of the heat plate, everything's working out well. I do keep coming and looking at the uh, cold tank just to make sure that there are no germs in there. And we're gonna uh, put a few dig orders down just to open up the space and maybe get those insulated walls finally built. Trying to make sure that all the water goes where it's supposed to be, particularly on our exploration run, trying to keep things out of the way. And still the water coming out of the plastic press might actually become something that I wanna deal with. It that now strikes me as a bit of a resource. It's dropping proper, pure, clean water out of the bottom. It's a little hot, but if it's dropping clean, fresh, untainted water, we could probably just drop it in the cold biome tank and, and let that do its work. Uh, shuffling people around to try and make sure that they're getting a well-rounded education because of course space cadets and such forth need uh, multiple masteries before you can uh, set them on that way so we need to make sure people have got multiple masteries those insulated tiles are getting slapped into place they're finally getting some sort of semblance of an actual room around the hot water tanks there and despite the fact that the germs are now dropping down to look like they're on top of the water pump uh, none are going through and indeed they are still dropping down 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 uh, so fast because the, the water is hot the water is unhospitable to them and there are so few that they are dying from loneliness if you will are oh, those poor things so inspired by the climb upwards i've decided that maybe it's time to start expanding some of my other corridors out and about so as i say we've got the ladder going upwards and that's going to just go up to the edge of the map but also we've got this other corridor down below and also a little bit off to the left here uh, i'm not looking at the bit that i'm supposed to be looking at uh because this there yeah, here this this bit uh i decided it's time to go and touch the other side of the map for some reason we haven't touched the left hand side of the map and it it can't be too much further away can it i mean like we have gone pretty far out the biomes are only sort of two or three biomes deep before you hit the edge of the map so it shouldn't be too much of a problem and of course with our digging master zedtech coming along and doing all the work for us it should take a literal uh, second uh, the uh germs actually appear to be getting closer and closer to being in this very tile here and in fact they are in that very tile there but you can see they're down in just double figures numbers of germs and i'm thinking even though maybe sometimes the pump is picking them up they're dying en route because you've just got like single single numbers i, I should imagine a singular germ is going to die uh, pretty quickly uh still thinking about that power corridor down the bottom there uh i i'm starting to think that maybe it's not such a great idea and then suddenly i'm like oh what a cool steam water I mean, like, it's great that we've now got an infinite source of water, but I've, I've literally spent this entire entire time trying to work out a water system, and, and now basically all we need to do is cool down this water, and, and then we could use it for, for everything. We could use it for food, we could burn it in the electrolyzer, we could just convert our dirty water into clear, clean water, and then burn it in through some other matters. We don't need to conserve it as much anymore, because no longer is it oh, the only water on the map. That's kind of what my entire system on the right here has been set up for mm. <laughs> it, it kind of hurts a little bit but that's all right we will uh, carry on uh, regardless i'm probably going to actually carry on working on the water recycling system and then just use the water from the cold vent to kind of like top us up when we use stuff or maybe uh use the cold vent to uh just create oxygen there and then and use the oxygen from that for uh, a nice little system. But with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time where I want to touch the other side of that, that map. We've got to make sure we do it. Touch the top. Maybe even try and crack through some of the layers down below as we've now got the exosuit set up. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!